Hi, this is Stover, the barbecue hunk. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Have a hunky day. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me! Fine, how's it going? You have a great show, I'm a big fan. Boing. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish! What? We ate two feet before we nursed. But listen, Laverdius, shut your face. Yeah, I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour. It's the Barbecue Central Show, where we talk about the most important items in the barbecue and grilling world today. If you're just tuning in, Boing. no problem. You've missed a great first hour. You missed Steve McMillan talk about Hartville Hardware coming up this weekend, the 10th annual Grill Fest, which I will be hosting. So make sure that if you're around Hartville or make plans to be around Hartville, Ohio, this coming Saturday, stop by Hartville Hardware and eat and drink and make merman. You can also see DivaQ live cooking and Mike Lang live cooking and Matt Frampton live cooking and no Captain Ron anymore. He's got pneumonia. I'd be interested to see if they decide to backfill this is the first time, or would have been the first time, that Grillfest had four live demos. It's always been three. Diva does two, and then Weber does one, and Big Green Egg does one. Diva top notch. She can pull two. But this would have been the first time that there were four. But good to see that there is a change in the live setting. And Matt Frampson, who I call the Pizziola to Pizziolis. Is that right? Yeah. The Pizziolo, the Pizziola, Pizziola, the Pizziolis, the boss of bosses, Capo, the Cappy, the Pizziolo, the Pizzioli will be live on stage this coming Saturday. I suggested, by the way, that for as much credit as Steve is getting for the black box. I told Steve, you should have this Matt Frampton out. He is the pizza expert of the country and perhaps the world. And he would do really good in a live setting. Guess what? Here he is. Good for me. Good for you. The show originating from Palm City, USA. Cleveland. Still to come on the show this evening, Mike Lang from Another Pint Please in about 11 minutes from now. And then closing out the show, Daniel Vaughn from Texas Monthly, tmbbq.com, his website. We say good evening to those of you watching tonight through one of our video streaming platform partners. You can go to facebook.com slash BBQ Central Show or twitter.com slash BBQ Central Show. You can also watch on YouTube which is youtube.com slash at BBQ Central Show. And we have a new YouTube poll question of the week that we're asking everybody about. Have you ever heard of Grillbot? And 58% of you are currently saying, yes, you have heard of Grillbot. Cracks Country Cooking is asking, what about a Primo 6XL grill? I say yes. And everybody, can I get a, oh yeah. Hey, everybody, can I trouble you for a, Give me that 6XL immediately. I mean, the double XL is pretty big. It's 25% bigger. Oh, boy. Am I going to do math? 25% bigger than the XL, which means three times bigger is 6XL from the double XL, and that's 25. That's 75% bigger. Am I right? Shabo! I don't know if I'm right. Can somebody double check the math? Can you fact check my math? I'm really good at math. 
Some of the best. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less this coming Friday, episode 351, taking you back to September 22nd of 2020, so not that long ago, all things considered, especially from the vintage years that we've been seeing recently from John Solberg. This week, we feature longtime listener and supporter of this show, a competitive barbecue pit master and a barbecue TV contestant, Sylvie Curry from A Lady of Q from Ramona, California, or Pomona, California, one of those. You might remember that back then, in the Septembers of 2020s, we were in the teeth of the pandemic, and everybody was watching everything we could possibly watch to pass the time. And remember, there were things like the Tiger King that reigned supreme back then. Remember the Tiger King? Everybody watched it. Don't lie. Well, Barbecue Showdown also made its debut roughly six months after the Tiger King on Netflix. And it was quite a hit. Subsequent seasons have followed. We've talked about those. But Sylvie Curry and our friend... Rashid Phillips were really standout stars and contestants on that first season. So if you missed all of this and you want to hear about her account of the experience and you want to hear the best moments show this coming Friday, and oh, by the way, since it's on Netflix, you can go search Barbecue Showdown if you're new to barbecue and grilling and you're new to this show. You didn't know anything about it until 30 seconds ago. You can go to Netflix and you can search BBQ Showdown. And season three is out, and there's obviously season two before that, and then the one we're talking about here, season one, with Sylvie, who made it quite far, and Rashid, who made it all the way until the end, but he didn't win, I don't believe, and I believe a lot of people still think that there was a jobbing going on in that regard as well. But we're not here to spread spread conspiracy theories on this show. We're conspiracy theories. You can subscribe to the show, and that's the only way you can get the best moment show, by the way, by visiting thebbqcentralshow.com slash subscribe. And don't forget, if you want to hear a guest or segment again that has been lost in the archives, you can email our pal John Solberg what you would like to hear, and he'll do his best to meet your expectation. And you can email John, by the way, at J-O-N at the BBQ Central Show dot com. That's J-O-N at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Pete in New York City is writing into the show. Greg, I don't know if you're taking nominations for guest of the year or not, but I think Robert Moss fits the bill in 2024. So much entertaining content, so much educational content. I've always been a fan of his But this year, he has reached a new level on your show, and I absolutely love it. Podcast listener only regards Pete. Pete, I agree. As I look back through the past nine months of the year, and I guess that would be eight months of the year at this point, it's hard to argue who has brought more new educational slash entertaining content month in and month out then Robert Moss, robertfmoss.com, talking a lot about Southern barbecue and the histories and the advancements and where did this come from and where did that come from and how did this grow out to here? How did it come back into the South? Few doing it as well on any platform as Robert Moss is doing it here on this show, no less. So, Pete, thank you for noticing that, number one. And I echo your sentiments, Robert Moss doing a bang-up job here in 2024. Already in the Barbecue Hall of Fame, so I can't put him in. But if I could put him in again, I would certainly do that. By the way, programming note next week, because it is September on the Embedded Correspondence segment, we will be ushering in a new class, the class of uh, the 2024 Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame. Yes. Remember, one needs only to have been a guest once to be in consideration. I know the emails and phone calls and text messages and 
instant messages through social are going to be coming hot and heavy for Maddie, Bobby, and Marley, who have all told me on many occasions, we've been on the show, I'm not in the Barbecue Hall of Fame. I get it, but it's not just up to me. Just because I'm your dad doesn't mean you get into the Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame. Just because you live in this house doesn't mean you earned the right. I'm not in the Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame. It's my show. Get that big stuff out of here. All the other embedded correspondents saying Matt Osmond are in the Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame. At least one time I have been a guest on my show, and I am not Andrew Tourette. You are not the host. I'm not in the Barbecue Central Show's guest hall of fame. How can that be? How is this? There are few injustices in this country that are as grave as that. And I'm just stumbling over it as I'm talking about. Wacky. Hey, don't forget, shirt orders are done at the end of the month. So if you want a cool shirt like this, not like this, this is the shirt, as we talked about in the first hour. $35 for small to extra large, $37 for 2XL, $39 for 3XL, $41 for 4XL, $43 for 5XL. That includes shipping. You have to email me, subject line, shirt promo. Tell me how many shirts you want, and then you can Venmo me the money or send a paper check, and those are the only two ways I'm taking money. So don't ask me if you can drop off cash or do other nonsense. No, the answer is no. Check or Venmo, that's it. No options on the shirt except size. You got your pricing. Hurry, only two weeks left, and then it's over with. You'll be left out in the dark. Mike Lang is ready to go. Before we get to him, it's Franklin Barbecue Pits time. By the way, Hardville Hardware is a certified Franklin Barbecue Pit dealer. If you're down there Saturday and you want to see the ins and outs of a Franklin barbecue pit, you want me to walk you around it, come and find me when I'm not interacting with live talent. And I'm happy to give you the walk around. You just bring the checkbook, Polly. What you have with the Franklin pit is a deeply thought out, refined version of the old propane style cookers that are built by Aaron Franklin for his Franklin Barbecue Restaurant. The Franklin Pit, primarily made of quarter-inch thick American-made steel, anything that sees heat, engineered to be incredibly solid, should last at least a century or more if cared for properly. The thickness of the steel guarantees professional-grade heat retention, which is a critical component to making great barbecue. Every Franklin Pit is unique unto itself, which includes their own natural markings and its own badge number. Great. Franklin Pits can be found at barbecue specialty stores in select regions of the country. If you, the listener, are an owner of such a store, you wish to become a certified Franklin dealer, please visit franklinbbqpits.com and fill out the dealer form to become eligible. If you, the listener of the show, want to own a Franklin Pit, but you live in a part of the country that doesn't have a certified Franklin dealer nearby you, fear not! You can visit the same website, franklinbbqpits.com. You can purchase a pit right there. Franklin Pits will ship a Franklin Pit right to your driveway. And then it's up to you to figure out where that bad boy is going to live. Great wheels on it, so if you have a lot of cement, don't drag it through the grass. That's going to be painful. If you have a lot of cement or wood decking or what have you, easily wheeled around. Robust, without a doubt, but easily wheeled around. So, get on it now, franklinbbqpits.com. And again, if you're going to be around Hartville on Saturday and you want me to do the walk around with you, you bring the checkbook, I'll bring the knowledge, we will make a deal, and then you'll walk away with a Franklin Barbecue Pit and be the envy of everybody at Grill Fest, which we'll talk about with Mike Lang here in one second. Stick around, be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, available in three sizes, host of accessories, 
It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if you're a professional, it's a cooker you want to add to the arsenal. You visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you and then see what magic ensues after that. My guest in the second hour leading off is back for another quarterly appearance here in 2024. If you follow him on social media or you visit his website, you're typically delighted at his recipe creations, also his photography and video shooting skills. Brandwise continues his association even deeper with industry leader Weber Grills. He wrote that book, One Beer Grilling, if you recall, and he is an inaugural member of the Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame all the way back in 2018. We welcome our pal Mike Lang to the show. Mike, we have a YouTube poll question of the week, and we're asking everybody this. Have you ever heard of the grill bot? Yes or no? Yes. Did you own a grill bot? No. In fact, oh. funny, my future brother-in-law, I think, just bought one, actually. So it's a very timely question. Oh, no. Wow. He bought one on purpose? Do you know how much those things cost? Tricked? No. What? How much? It's over 100 bucks. Oh, my God. That's it. We're done. Yeah. We got to go have an intervention right now. Hopefully, he <laughs> kept his receipt. So I don't know if you are – I want to get in the weeds immediately, but that's what we do here. I don't know if you're familiar with the first generation of grill bot. So – Eight years ago, nine years ago, Grillbot was originally put into the market, probably around the time that the HPBA Expo typically takes place, March, April time frame. And it was I was getting I was getting media inquiries from whoever was running PR at Grillbot saying, Hey, we've come out with the greatest grill brush ever. You don't have to use any elbow grease. You just stick this thing on your hot grill after you're done cooking and push the button and magically it works away. It's around the, the grill and gets you all nice and clean. And then it shuts off all on its own because of course everybody was worried about having their battery die as they're forgetting to turn it off after they went inside to eat all well and good. The problem is you never open the hood up when you go to fire up the grill the next time and now you have medium rare grill bot, which you don't want to have. So <laughs> make sure you tell your brother in law if he's spending 130 bucks or whatever it is on grill bot that he sets a timer or something that reminds him to get the grill bot out of the grill before he fires it up for the second time. Otherwise, it could be a one and done. But this is a second life for a product that should not have had a first life. Uh, that is sage advice. And yeah, it's, I mean, I get, but boy, that is super gimmicky. I think my uh, elbow grease works just fine. And how long does it take you to clean the grill, Mike? And, and please take <laughs> very liberal swings at this. Maybe 30 seconds if you do it yeah. right. And that's not yeah. when you just finish cooking. It's when you close the lid and next time fire it up and get it heated up and do it then. So we'll talk about the Hartville Hardware Grill Fest here in a moment. But I want to get your thoughts on what I see happening at your house. And please tell me to back off if I go past where you feel comfortable talking about this. But <laughs> I see a little kid who has obviously taken a shine to you, to your cooking gear, probably your tech gear too, because I take a shine to that. But that's a whole level of envy we don't want to talk about at this point. You're obviously fostering his curiosity of live fire cooking. So was he interested in this kind of cooking prior to you showing up? No, not, not the, I don't believe so. Mm. How old is he? Well, he was, he's also seven. He's seven. So seven. <laughs> prior to me being around, he wasn't even on the countertop with a stool. So yeah. yeah, it's a pretty recent adventure for him. We love it. How do you... For for folks that have smaller kids then, and you know, you're the adult, you're loving this new live fire adventure that you might be on, or maybe you're a grizzled vet and you have a, a younger kid at home. How do you bring someone that age along in the cooking scheme of things? Yeah, I think the minute that they show interest in it, jump on because because you're that age, we can watch the interest change within seven days. And, you know, you know that as well from being a dad. I mean, it, it's constantly moving. So if there's any interest whatsoever, jump on it. And that's kind of what we did. How do you not 
take over as the expert as you can see things potentially going downhill or do you step in to make corrective measures? What's the, the thought there? That's a timely question because, you know, I posted that reel about a week ago of doing smash burgers and it was a small manageable dinner and he was really, he's into it all the way. Yeah. So much so that last night he just wanted to know that I'm making dinner. He didn't know what we were having. I go, okay. He so said, I'm making again, dinner, but it was, yeah. Yeah. Wow, and I I love he's it. like, what are we having? I go smash burgers. Yeah. So, but this was a little bit more. We had like 11 smash burgers and the spacing, even on the 36 inch slate was a lot for his little hand. So I actually had to move in quicker and he did not like it and said he was good. And then went back inside. So it is a balancing <laughs> act to not scare them away and be supportive, but he's resilient. He'll be back at it. I'm not worried. Is it almost, this is, okay, so we're preface this by saying entertainment purposes only. Is there any benefit to just letting him go and getting burned and realizing, oh, okay, you know, maybe this is what he was talking about, or, or next time I should be attacking it this way, or maybe he says, hey, uh, Mike, I didn't really like the fact that I burned my pinky and middle finger on my right hand when I was making the smash burgers this time around. How can I avoid that? It's funny, really, the grease, it can be so intense with those things. And I'm always admire his just his bravery because he digs in there. You know, my son's 26 when he was that age. Wasn't the same battle. He liked to try <laughs> to cook, but if the flames were too high. He was gone. But uh, Cal is just <laughs> he's all in. And I think, you know, yeah, to some degree, failure is a good teaching point. Um, but this was just more kind of like Mike anal. It wasn't even like, you know, you know, you're going to get hurt. It's like, we got to really think this through. Mm. Uh, so it's, we're, we've got a good balancing act, but he's definitely brave and he, he likes to do it. I mean, he'll even go and make eggs by himself on the cooktop. If nobody will feed him, he, I mean, he constantly eats. So he has that ability. I think it's going to serve him well. You have a slew of cookers like few do. Does he gravitate towards one specifically, or is he a fan of many? He likes to do a charcoal dump. He likes to get up the flat top. Uh, you know, he likes to turn the knobs on the summit. So he uh, does not discriminate against what we're working on. <laughs> he just wants to have literally have a hand in it. Hartville Hardware's 10th annual Grill Fest is coming this Saturday. If you can believe it, I had Steve McMillan on in the first hour and we were getting some of the logistics on how he set something up like this and how they've gotten to year 10. He did admit that this was his brainchild. So he birthed it which will be 10 years ago on Saturday. And as I told a very short story, the first grill fest I actually cooked in the ribs competition. Uh, I was not asked to be a host. I don't think anybody knew who I was at that point. And I finished somewhere wildly in the middle on, uh, on the pellet cooker and uh, couldn't, couldn't figure out how I could have possibly lost a rib competition against such weak competition. I've never cooked a competition in my life, so I have nothing to gauge that. At. But my ego told me, if you enter, there's no way you could possibly lose. And of course, I possibly lost um, right in the heart of uh, mediocrity. So here we are 10 years later, and it has grown into a tremendous event. How many years is this going to make for you? This is my third one. Third year. All right. So bigger every year, right? Yeah. Yeah. What are we expecting from a Mike Lang on the main stage where you get up in front of hundreds, if not thousands of people ready to take on a Mike Lang who also wrote One Beer Grilling, by the way? Well, I'll first say hello to the wonderful MC Greg Rempe, yes, who I uh, say, yeah. Greg is truly, I mention it on the stage uh, every year and I'll mention it now. Greg is truly the glue that holds it all together. So if there's a reason to come out besides all the barbecue, it's definitely to see Greg uh, in action. So you're not going to miss out. But in terms of what I'm making, uh, Meathead is probably going to roll his eyes at this, but I'm doing beer can chicken. And I'm also doing, <laughs> yeah, I know, but let me explain myself. Beer can chicken. And I'm also doing grilled corn ribs. Oh, so, great. You know, I great. I, I have so many questions about, I saw you post it a couple weeks ago. Grilled corn, you do the great yeah. video, of course. And, uh, I mean, I just have so many questions about grilled corn ribs, but uh, I've interrupted. So finish first before I go in on that. Well, I'll segue to this first. 
Number one, corn ribs are fantastic because you, know, you take an ear of corn and you cut it into eighths. You grill it much faster than a whole corn. The best thing about it is you can eat corn with one hand and you can also clear all of the kernels off of the cob. It's convenient. It's efficient. It's fast. It's good. And I think everybody should do it. Is it? Yes. It seems like nonsense to me. Cutting the corn <laughs> cob into eighths grilling the individual ribs uh and then you still have to buy it you, you don't i would buy into it a thousand percent more if you just put the whole effing thing in your mouth somehow and you wouldn't get sick doing that and you could just eat the corn like <laughs> yeah, that i mean i that. understand it's got to stay on the cob in order to stay together and this and that but i don't know why you would cut it all up aside from aesthetics than to just eat the freaking corn on the cob the normal way because you got to eat it the same way regardless. Not everyone eats a whole corn. Everybody eats cob. all corn. Look at, That's the only way you eat look it. Look at your plate next time. Look how many Rage. Look how many kernels are left on that cob. Yes, but look, look how many are left on there. This then, way, they're going to clear it off. If this is my cob, then I take the what I just ate like a maniac and so gross, I clean my face. Then I take uh, the, the uh, pointy end, stick it on my plate, butter knife run it down all the way around or to get the shavings on the plate then salt maybe a little extra butter a little hot sauce onto the fork and into the pie hole is that too too ocd you don't think most people do that i'd be on my fourth corn rib heading for dessert while you're still there making some sort of uh, corn hash on your plate corn hash yes <laughs> thank you finally i was trying to figure out what i would need to call that it's corn hash I mean, just because everybody else in my family looks like I'm a maniac when I do it, but I learned it from my dad, so his fault. Um, all right, so corn ribs, uh, probably something we'll have to try. Uh, and then beer can chicken in the classical presentation, do you do you feel yeah. any obligation to say, hey, Meathead says maybe it's unsafe if you do this because you're adding a barrier of you know something in the cavity? What's the take on that? And I won't ask you that on Saturday because I want to yeah. freak anybody out. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I wouldn't say unsafe. You just got to be obviously uh, cognizant of what the cooking temperature is. And obviously, you're not going to leave beer in the can. You're going to drink it first and put whatever else in there, water or whatnot, to hold the can down. But, you know, I get beer can chicken still, it may not be the world's greatest chicken. It's really good chicken when it's cooked properly. Yeah. But also, it's a part of the presentation and the experience. And so many times, we like food because of the experience. <laughs> If you're trying to get somebody that's watching this demo to actually go buy a grill and make something that they feel they can make that not everyone's doing, that might be beer can chicken. And I'm going to show them the road to do that. It's fun. I can't, you know, I can't knock it. When you are in the Weber tent, what's the menu agenda pushing out samples to the great unwashed? I actually don't know what the guys have on the list. I know for sure for the demo for me, we'll be actually doing multiple beer can chickens yeah. and multiple corn ribs. And I'll give you a small plate and knife and fork so you can have the whole corn experience. Thank you. Um, but we'll be doing that. But they've got so much food they cook through every year. It's phenomenal. And I love helping them out. Mm. Uh, anything you're looking forward to specifically as you look through the demos? By the way, I don't know if you heard it or not, but uh, late breaking news from Steve McMillan. Captain Ron has succumbed to pneumonia and he will not be making the trip up uh, this Saturday. But still, with the Matt Frampton, the DVQ, and yourself, it's uh, quite a live cooking demo in its own right. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear about Ron. I know he's really broken up by not being able to make it. Looking super forward to seeing Matt up on the demo stage and, of course, Danielle oh, yeah. and, of course, you. And also, yeah, a lot of the guys are competing in everything that we've been talking to. Um, I just, it's such a great time. The weather is going to be phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And it's always a wonderful experience. So if you're even within an hour plus drive in Northeast Ohio, come out. It is truly an amazing event. And Hartville itself is just such a phenomenal store. Uh, you could easily get lost in there and then spend way more money than you planned on. So it's, yeah, it is the event. As I say, it is a store that has a full-size house inside the store and i know people think i'm joking when i say that but at 300,000 square feet you have a lot of height and a lot of space and you can put a house inside of a store and you can actually walk through it concept house they've actually rebuilt it since we were there the last time so it's a completely new house inside the store so if you went through it last year uh, completely refreshed uh, tore down to the nuts and bolts and then uh, put back up so uh, really excited to go back through there and uh, see what it looks like here. Um, 
from another Pine Please standpoint, things you're working on or from a Weber standpoint, things you're working on that we should know about? Yeah, uh, I mean, Weber work continues, uh, just creating a ton of content. Uh, you'll see it through their Instagram reels and Facebook reels and video. I'm also headed up to Chicago next week for continuing worse with, uh, work with Ace Hardware Corporate. We'll be doing food for their next uh, broadcast commercial, commercial campaign. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't know where all the time and the days go since I retired three months ago. So life is good. Are you busier now than you were keep, keeping creeping marauders off the street? Oddly, yes. <laughs> it's, it's kind of insane. I've been doing some one-off catering stuff too. And it's just, uh, I love it. Uh, I don't miss work at all, sadly. Uh, but this has uh, been fantastic. But yeah, it's keeping me super, super busy. Favorite beer at the moment? No. Uh, a little homage to where we're headed. It's uh, from Great Lakes Brewing Company. They're oh. Nosferatu Double Red IPA. It's Double. a seasonal. It's the holidays. It's got a wonderful kick to it. Fantastic. Pick what's, it up. what's the ABVs on that? Uh, knowing me, it's over eight. No way. Uh, yeah, eight. Actually, yeah, eight percent on the nose. Wow. That's a big beer. I've but got some friends that love it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Beer's double digits. I've got friends always laugh when I come over for initial beer and I pop something out and they guess it's probably over 10% and it, it usually is. Do you have a lot of beer? Like what's the highest ABV on a beer that you have? Sam Adams Utopias. Um, it's probably more borderline port. Mm. It's non-carbonated. It's around 26%. Oh. They release it every, I don't know, four or five years. 26%. It's really good. Yeah, it's it's ah. more port wine yeah. territory. Wow. But it's it is phenomenal. All right. Well, I have a selection of great cigars to enjoy once we get done with what we're going to be doing Saturday as we uh, decompress from a day's events over at the hotel. So looking forward to that. In the meantime, if you're going to be around the general area of Hartville Hardware or make plans to be around the general area of Hartville Hardware on Saturday, from 10 to about 4, Mike Lang will be up there doing live demos from another pint, please. Maybe he'll bring his books and he can sign them and take pictures with you and all that fun stuff. Mike, always appreciate the time, and we'll see you Saturday. Greg, thanks so much. I will see you then. All right. Mike Lang right there. Drive safe. And we will see him here in a matter of days. And then we will interact during live demos. So if you like this interaction, can you imagine what it's like when you put us in the same tent and we get to interact live and in person. Wow. The mind is blown. Daniel Vaughn is ready to go. We'll get to him here in just one second. I'll talk to you quickly about Big Papa Smokers. Are you ready to score that perfect 180 on chicken, ribs, pork, brisket? Big Papa Smokers has you covered with the best rubs, sauces, and injections in the business. For a limited time, use promo code BBQ Central and get 10% off all Big Papa Smokers products. That's right, 10% off secret ingredients the championship teams swear by and win with weekend in and weekend out. Don't miss out on this incredible offer, whether you're aiming for your next GC or next barbecue contest, or you're just looking to take your barbecue and grilled food to the next level of awesomeness. Remember, your food just got better with Big Papa. Offer valid now through October 31st. Promo code BBQ Central when you visit BigPapaSmokers.com. And we are continuing to wish our pal Sterling Ball well as he is recovering. I won't get into the depths of that, but glad he's still around and glad he is recovering and on the mend. BigPapaSmokers.com, code BBQ Central for 10% off all Big Papa Smokers products. The barbecue editor for Texas Monthly stands by. Stick around. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpey. We thank Mike Lang for joining us last segment. This portion of the show being brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. Step into the world of McAuliffe Cigars, where each blend is a chapter in a grand tale of craftsmanship and passion. 
portfolio is a symphony of flavors, each note carefully composed to create an unforgettable Nicaraguan smoking experience. You visit McAllisCigars.com and use the locator to find a retailer near you and then make sure they're stocking black and blue. And the red, I believe, was just released as well. So check those out. Helping me close the show tonight, the barbecue editor for Texas Monthly Magazine. You also see him on this show quarterly visits throughout the year as we talk about things going on in Texas and in the barbecue world in general. By the way, he is a member of of the inaugural 2018 Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame class. I am, of course, talking about our pal Daniel Vaughn. Daniel, we have a YouTube poll question of the week that we're asking everybody before we get going here tonight, including all guests, which is this. Have you ever heard of the Grillbot? Yes or no? I don't have you, Daniel. You on mute? Uh Uh-oh! Uh-oh! You might have to uh, reconnect in order for that to change up. We can wait. By the way. Yeah, just close out and come back in. Full close down. Uh, 59% of you that are voting right now have heard of the real bot. Which means 41% of you haven't. I don't know why at the end, when I hit end poll, it does appear that I'm always 1% short of 100. That's annoying. It's another reason to hate YouTube, but they hate me right back just as long. How about now? I'm here with you. All right. I got you. All right, let's try it again. Have you ever heard of something called the grill bot? Yes or no? All right. So is that the, you, the automatic brush thing for your grill that you just so, sort of turn on and, and, and let it clean? Yes. Obviously, you then have. I've heard of the grill bot. Yes, 59 seen it in action. But were you highly impressed or highly offended as a human man? Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I guess my grill just doesn't get that dirty. I didn't see really the need to have it going uh, all by itself. Did you know that this is second generation grill bot? I think seven or eight years ago it came out the first time after an HPB wow. expo or something like that. I was just telling. Mike Lang, uh, last segment that I was even getting inundated by whoever was running PR for Grillbot at that time saying, you got to have the CEO on. They just did great reviews and got uh, accolades at the HPB Expo. And of course, everybody put it in their grill that bought it. And then they forgot to take it out of their grill when they fired it up the second time. And now you got well done Grillbot. Well, I'm wondering if that that same expo did they have someone at a grill with the grill bot and someone right next to them with the grill brush, you know? <laughs> that just, would be so great. Just have a little race. Yeah. Oh, they're 129 uh, robot or this twenty dollar you know hand spun thing. Oh, I'm done too. By the way, I didn't forget it. And uh, you know, but also when they're showing you the demo of the grill bot racing across the kettle grill is usually what they have it in or a a rectangle gas grill the lid's always open but in the directions it says you know close the top you can have it on a cooling down grill and it'll shut off after the thing's clean which means it's set on a timer and maybe it's clean or maybe it isn't and then you forget about it and then you cook it the next time so bad way to uh screw yourself out of a hundred plus bucks well, maybe if you wear like a hard hat and safety goggles, you can operate it with the lid open. Yeah. That way you don't forget it. That's right. And you don't get any schmutz kicked in your eye as well. Mm-hmm. You have a list. I love lists. I yes. think perhaps maybe nobody in this industry creates lists like Texas Monthly and Daniel Vaughn does. Uh, puts people in a tizzy. Uh, in both the good and bad ways, if you're high on lists from Texas Monthly and if you're not on the list, put you in a different kind of a tizzy. But this is a different list than perhaps we've ever seen before coming from you. So uh, what is the list that we're going to be talking about tonight? Uh, before we put it out, I hadn't seen anybody really undertake uh, a list like this, which is uh, I went all over the country looking for the best Texas style barbecue outside of Texas. So Mm -hmm. Texas monthly is well known for the Texas monthly top 50, all 50 barbecue joints within Texas. We do it every four years. Um, And, you know, let's just say maybe I got a little bored 
also um, saw the opportunity to have Texas Monthly pay for me to fly all over the country and try barbecue everywhere. So uh, I sold them on the idea, and I really started about 16 months ago. Wow. Uh, you, were, you were part of the search as well. You were there right. for some of it in, in Cleveland. Uh, and yeah, I went and tried as many barbecue joints as I could outside the state doing Texas style barbecue to, to come back and do a top 50, uh, outside of Texas. Texas in its own right, a huge state, as you know, however, an additional 49 states are 48 surrounding, uh, Texas. How do you look at each state and, you know, a lot of these are big in their own right as well and say, OK, uh, I, I need to pair out X barbecue restaurants immediately because maybe they're not Texas based. But maybe you have still a strong number of Texas style barbecue restaurants. So how do you decide which ones you're going to go to? Because you can't possibly go to all Texas style barbecue restaurants in all states to evaluate. Yeah, that's right. I never knew I was. I knew I was never going to be able to get to every one of them. Uh, so you know, there are a few things that I use to to narrow the list down. As you first mentioned, it's got to be Texas style. So there's that. Uh, I wasn't going to try the best whole hog barbecue out there, the best pork shoulders or Memphis ribs or whatnot. Um, the other thing was it needed to be a, a restaurant that had uh, predictable hours and a set location because uh, I was creating this list, a nationwide list that. Uh, is a piece of service journalism that people from all over the country are, are hopefully going to use. And I didn't want to have them having to search like a Facebook page for where this food truck or that pop-up might be this week or next week. So um, there's that. Uh, I was also a lot more selective about the places I went based on what the food looked like. Uh, you know, there's plenty of photos that you can share from barbecue joints uh, really all over the country and, and lots that you can look through. And so there are some places that didn't make it because it didn't look like they really had a chance at all uh, just from the barbecue that, you know, other customers had taken a photo of. Uh, more importantly, the barbecue photos that the owners maybe had shared on their Instagram pages. Um, and, you know, uh, the list grew as I was doing this search. Uh, people would send in recommendations uh, either while I was in a location um, and also send in plenty of recommendations once they learned sort of what I was doing, which that news was broke here on this show Absolutely, uh, that I was going to do this list. So, uh, yeah, even up until like the day the day that I released the list, uh, I had uh, mentioned several times that I was that I was uh, undertaking this search. Uh, and f was very upfront about the purpose of it as well. And uh, was asking my uh, social media followers, like who would be interested in a nationwide ranking of the best barbecue outside of Texas? Uh, people are like, please do, please do. And I, I then released the <laughs> link uh, later, uh, just like a, a few minutes later. So yeah. um, there, there was definitely a hunger for this sort of list. I know that uh, Southern Living, Robert Moss does a list of the best barbecue uh, in the South, uh, which is certainly limiting uh, regionally. And there's just so much good barbecue all over the country. I thought it was worthwhile to, to look at it, um, you know, outside the South, outside of Texas. And, you know, Texas barbecue is uh, the easy choice, obviously, for me and my job and the magazine I work for, but also, as I argue in the piece, it is American barbecue now. Mm. If you're looking at uh, the barbecue joints that open across the country, uh, for for a barbecue joint not to have brisket now on the menu is a major surprise. Whereas uh, even 10 years ago, I think it, it was surprising when a place, uh, say, in the Carolinas, which have quite a few spots on this list, uh, had brisket on the menu at all. Mm. Could a owner of one of these joints prettied up some pictures like you said you were you could discount some especially if the the uh the website owner had crappy pictures you're like well if their pictures are crappy and they're not being uplifted by any social media that is also and that we're just going to skip that place can people get you in the door if they would have went out of their way to make real sexy photographs but their barbecue sucked uh yeah yeah that, you feel that cheated? certainly happened uh, do I feel cheated? Uh, no, I just, they're, they're good at marketing. Uh, and they, uh, <laughs> they chose the right photos. Um, you know, whether 
you know, the, the question though, is like from an, from an owner's standpoint, like, do you want customers to come into your restaurant and be disappointed? Uh, so don't you want the photos that you share of your barbecue to be an accurate representation of what people are actually going to get? Uh, otherwise, they might be sorely disappointed. I have to say, as you as I perused the list, I am 100% shocked that Ohio, by the way, your home state did not make the list. Mm. So That's right. The obvious follow-up question is, why do you hate Ohio so much? Go ahead. I uh, had a really rough childhood. Um. Join the club, pal. <laughs> uh, no, uh, th- I mean, there was a place in Medina that looked really good. And uh, right before I came, they uh, had switched over from being a restaurant to uh, changing it up to serving from a food truck on, on weekends at various locations. Um uh, Joe's barbecue in Kent that I went to, I was really impressed with the brisket, uh, not so much with a few other items. Um, and also they do themselves a, a great disservice as far as the judging of their barbecue. There's nowhere to eat it on site. You've got to like drive around and search for a spot to sit, at, sit down and eat it. Um, and so, yeah, you, you're going to have to travel with it to be able to enjoy it. There's literally not a, a, a table, a chair, uh, nothing on that lot, uh, in which to enjoy it. Um, you know, there were uh, there was a spot just queuing down in Cincinnati uh, that I enjoyed, but the the you know, yeah, just the the brisket itself wasn't quite there, and neither were the ribs. So yeah, I, I tried. I went to several spots in Ohio. Um, uh, Hoggy's Barbecue in Columbus was another one. Mm. Uh, a few good items, a few duds. Uh, so. Uh, you know, that was that was the one owner that reached out to me, uh, truly curious about my thoughts and and really wanted uh, he he requested some real honest mm. uh, feedback and in, in which I gave to him. So the guy from uh, Landmark didn't reach back out to you and ask for real feedback. Like he he was they, look. I got to tell everybody. Uh, we I, went I'm, to Landmark. I'm together, in the restaurant yes. together. Your kids were there too. Great to meet them. And the owner comes out and it's like. Tom Cruise is in the restaurant, except it's not Tom Cruise. It's Daniel Vaughn. It is the host of the Barbecue Central No, 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 no. It was you. And he's like all gay. Oh, my God. We thought maybe this and that. Or I don't know if you reached out and said you might be stopping by or whatever. But like he was there and, and he was so excited that you are in his establishment getting ready to to eat his food. But in the end, what was your honest rank of i think we had like brisket and maybe some of the pulled pork or whatever or ribs too i think what did you what did you think or if you could remember yeah we had some ribs we had some uh pork belly as well oh, yeah, um, pork belly yeah yeah we had some dry turkey uh you know i mean m- most of it I, I would put in the mediocre cat i think all of it i would put in the mediocre category i don't think there was really anything any one thing there that really stuck out as is a great bite of barbecue uh and and that's why landmark didn't make the list they they did provide excellent hospitality uh i'm i'm certain that most guests do not leave there with uh six um you know two ounce well, mini bottle tasters yeah. of their finest selection of bourbons, but it did not sway my opinion about their barbecue yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, they might be capable of doing some really great barbecue from time to time, but the day we visited it, it wasn't one of those days. When you look at the top five of the list, uh, A, what are they and why do they achieve uh, the top five rank? Yeah, well, um, you know, the one of the last places I went to visit was uh, Palmyra Barbecue in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and they're number one on the list. Uh, and I, I really wanted to make sure I wasn't suffering from a recency bias of, you know, I just remembered having this great meal and some of the other meals that I had were 16 months prior. Uh, so I, I really evaluated it item by item. And uh, I didn't even eat brisket there. They, they do a smoked beef item every day. The day that I visited, it was not brisket. It was not beef ribs. It was beef cheeks. And it was truly one of the finest smoked beef cheeks I'd ever had. Mm. Uh, with all apologies to Leroy and Lewis. So Leroy and Lewis in Austin makes a damn fine smoked beef cheek. Uh, the one at Palmyra just, I, I don't know if they just picked the right one or if they've got 
some special magic in their process, but it was just the most perfectly melting, tender, unctuous piece of beef. It was so good. Uh, it really just that, and that was really the story with everything, all of their sides. They are this great combination of uh, Puerto Rican flavors, uh, South Car- Carolina style whole hog barbecue and Texas style barbecue. So they've got the, the whole hog with a sofrito mop sauce from Puerto Rico. Uh, they've got the hash and rice uh, made from the smoked hog's head, which is very South Carolina. And then they've got, you know, Texas ribs, Texas smoked sausages, the, the smoked beef element every day, as I mentioned. Uh, and then, the guava cheesecake made by the owner's mother just uh, to set things off. Not that you're looking for confirmation of number one, uh, Palmyra barbecue, but Robert Moss just released the best new barbecue joints, 2024. Yes, he did. Look at this Palmyra barbecue. Number one as well. Boom. So yes, here you have the two most respective, barbecue editors in the country well i mean you're the real barbecue editor he's contributing and you both agree that palmyra is the uh, the one uh that is outside of texas yes and i had eaten uh so hector garate is the owner and pit master and i had eaten his barbecue at the texas monthly barbecue festival he <laughs> came in and uh, cooked with koi barbecue and they did a little collaboration on on some whole hog and it was fantastic there i was glad to see that it uh translated well into the restaurant uh rate barb's bq for me rate it yeah rate it oh uh i mean wow uh it was when i ate there i was really just giddy with excitement of how much flavor they pulled out of each item Hmm. uh the the turkey um just the the rub on the turkey uh it wasn't um uh, you know, so, so often smoked turkey basically just tastes black pepper and smoke, and uh, they, all the flavors in their rub actually came out in it. Um, the uh, the the lime zest on the ribs makes it look sort of gimmicky, like maybe this is a garnish for color, but the the flavor, the acidic bite that came, uh, you know, they balanced that well. It was all, it almost reminded me of competition barbecue where you've mm-hmm. got these, uh, it, you know, very salty ribs, um, uh, sweetness in the glaze, and then you've got this acidic element to counteract it all, but uh, perfectly cooked, just uh, spot on there. The lamb chops, amazing. The, the green spaghetti uh, instead of a mac and cheese, it's got that same sort of homey feel to it. But uh, rather than making a cheese sauce, the spaghetti uh, is mixed with a sauce made of pureed sour cream, cream cheese, poblanos, jalapenos, uh, cilantro, all comes together in the sauce. Uh, wow. Makes for like a really uh, warm spices uh, in, a, in a mac and cheese sort of uh, feel to it. Um, yeah, I mean, Barb's is, is fantastic. And the, uh, it was no surprise that they made Bon Appetit's list for best new restaurants in the country. Uh, glad to see that they're now open on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and I, I talked with Chuck, the, the pit master, and she said that she's working to train up the staff to be able to open on Fridays here <laughs> in the near future. In two weeks, I'm going to be back in Houston would I want to go to brisket and rice over Truth Barbecue? It depends if you've been to Truth Barbecue. I have before. twice. Okay, then yeah, go try brisket and rice. Uh, Truth Barbecue is fantastic. I think it's really the best in the area. Uh, but if you've already been there and experienced that and, and had their barbecue, then go try brisket and rice. I think they do a, a great job, and you can certainly get something that's a, a little different than your usual uh, barbecue platter. They do brisket and rice really two different ways. They make just uh, a really great fluffy white rice uh, with slices of smoky brisket layered over top and some of their barbecue sauce, very simple. Uh, and then they do a completely different dish of uh, fried rice uh, with uh, Chinese sausage and chunks of brisket, uh, some of their barbecue sauce mixed into the fried rice. Uh, so you, you try those side by side. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a nice meal. Who's got the better banana pudding? Uh, truth. I mean, but it's so truth makes so great good. banana pudding. Oh yeah. 
they, they make really great banana pudding, but they're so well known for their cakes and they have such a variety. These big yeah. three layer cakes with, oh, yeah. you know, chocolate and chocolate and white cake with coconut. Uh, uh, I mean, they have, uh, they have a banana cream cake if you want the best of both worlds uh, with the, with the banana pudding flavor. Uh, mm. So their cakes are usually the showstopper. And so everybody goes for the cake. Uh, so it's usually on your third or fourth visit that you finally get to the banana pudding and it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's masterful. Yeah. I eat it by, I would eat it by the gallon or the five gallon bucket and uh, there's no turnoff switch for me. What are you working on over Texas monthly? We should be on the lookout for over the next uh, 30, 40 days. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to get uh, some feedback from places in Hawaii and Alaska that feel left out, maybe Puerto Rico as well, uh, so that uh, I just must go visit those places to uh, truly complete my my search across the country. But I, I need uh, some good reader feedback from those places to hmm. uh, maybe lobby the, the folks at Texas Monthly to, to let that happen. Um, but I, I'm working on a couple of stories right now. I talked to the Department of Labor today uh, to get really some in-depth understanding of tipping policy and why several barbecue joints have run afoul of that, uh, those right. tipping policies right. and, and been fined pretty heavily uh, for some of their back wages. Uh, Black's barbecue being a, a big one, Hard Eight barbecue, uh, Tejas barbecue and Tomball is currently in litigation with the Department of Labor. Uh, Valentina's was on a payment plan, but Valentina's is closed yep. uh, for good. And so that, um, well, that one's just no longer uh, act, an active case. Uh, but yeah, there's there's been some uh, real big misunderstandings between ownership and how you know how they're supposed to take tips out of uh, out of the tip pool. Um, and I'm writing an article to help uh, help get some of these small business owners a greater understanding of how that tipping policy works, especially as they start to grow their restaurants, so they they can. Uh, do it right and not have the department la department of labor coming after them. Uh, I'm also working on a, also working on a, a article about weak tea. Uh, iced tea is one of those things that I eat or I drink along with my barbecue at nearly every barbecue joint I go to, uh, love a, a good glass of iced tea, but, uh, you know, so many barbecue joints taste a whole lot more like ice than tea. And so I've, I've, targeted some places that do it really, really well and talk to them about why they do it so well, why it's important to them and how they, uh, what vendors they use, what sort of equipment they use to get a really good glass of iced tea. Is it a stretch for me to speculate that they actually care and it's probably way more homemade in those ones that are really doing it well versus the ones that aren't? Uh, I think it's the way that they tinker with the machinery that they have, right? It's, uh, um, if you, so I made Thai tea at home. If you follow the directions on the box for Thai tea, you're going to get the weakest, blandest Thai tea you can imagine. But if you boil the heck out of them, squeeze them out, um, uh, you're and and basically overstuff the water with tea bags, then you're going to get that good tea flavor. And I, I think that the places that make really great tea, they just, you know, they use a lot more tea bags. They let it steep for longer and they actually care about the tea bags that they're purchasing to get that flavor. Um, uh, and yeah, they, uh, they, they make, well, they're, they're not making weak tea, so I'm happy to drink it. All right. So tips and tea are stories that you're working on. So we'll be on the lookout. And barbecue. For those. I'm, I'm writing about barbecue. Of course, too. always, <laughs> always barbecue. No doubt that's yes. what pays the bills. Uh, we'll I got a, a trip planned down to Austin. I did, did a two days uh, last week down in the Houston area, and I uh, got a, a article on Damon's True Texas Barbecue uh, down in Wharton, Texas, southwest of Houston. That'll be coming out uh, probably tomorrow. Hmm. Good, gotta, good place. I got to ask good you. Good spot. I got to ask you a question here. Make sure I. All right. Oh, no, he's getting quiet. I have to this is a secret. I have to redo my sound here so you can hear this so you're going to austin so you know one of my close pals is uh, aaron franklin uh one of your close oh pals yeah okay well. do you uh do you know this guy outside of barbecue aaron franklin yeah yeah you ever yeah heard i know aaron uh, you ever, outside of barbecue. you ever heard this before that must be him on the drum guitar 
Oh, do you know about this group? I have heard about this group. I know that, uh, you know, long ago before barbecue, <laughs> that he was truly a touring musician. Yes. He was out on the road uh, quite a lot. Uh, it was actually one of his tour buddies that introduced him to Louis Miller Barbecue, which was one of the formative places uh, in him gaining his love for barbecue and, and truly an understanding of what it took to make really great barbecue. And just the fact that great barbecue is a whole lot different than just the average barbecue you get. I was setting him up for a sound check and he had this magnificent microphone and I had sent him one of mine, like one of my you know standbys for people that, that don't have whatever. And uh, he had this magnificent microphone and we were talking about whatever. And I said, what the deal? What the, what the hell with that microphone? He's like, well, you know, with all the sound stuff. I'm like, uh, I don't even know what that means. Like, I know what that means to me, but what does that mean to a guy that cooks barbecue? And he said, oh, well, you know, with the band. I was like, okay. I'm like, what, what band? And so we get to talking. He's the lead guitarist and the, the music. Um, Oh, uh, there's a fancy word for mixer. It. No, they, there's a much more fancy term for mixer, but he he uh oh crap, whatever. So, he plays the lead guitar, he's the one that's in charge of all the music and uh I'm like, "Oh, like who who knows about this? Nobody knows about it." Like, are, do you play out? Like, oh yeah, we play out. I'm like, so and nobody realizes that the guy playing guitar on stage is the guy that makes uh, arguably the best barbecue in the state of Texas. And he's like, oh, I guess not. So I said, are you on? Are you on Spotify? And he said, yeah. So the name of the group is Zeus Apollo. They only have one offering on Spotify at the moment. Uh, uh, you know, most of them are kind of like, eh. But I really like the first track. No one's town has such a, a Foo Fighter kind of that that like late '90s, early 2000s feel to it. And I mean, he's evidently a very accomplished guitar player. I mean, it sounds really good, and uh, they did a pretty good job with this record. But if you're interested, Zeus Apollo, Zeus Apollo. I'll send you the link after we get off tonight. Okay, you can check. Very it out. masculine. Yes, very masculine. <laughs> Do you know where Zeus Apollo comes from, by chance? Uh, I mean, they're both from Greece, right? Well, yes, but uh, of course, Aaron Franklin, not probably a, a, a Greek uh, mythology expert, uh, named after his dog, Zeus Apollo, which is named after the two dogs in Ghostbusters, Zeus and Apollo. How about that? All right. Yeah. I like it. That seems to line up okay. more with a, a personality of Aaron Franklin versus Greek mythology. But. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It certainly does. All right, well, I'll yeah. send you the well, link. I'll have, to, I'll have to give that a listen on you can, Spotify. It's yeah. Deuce Apollo. Yeah, it's one of those things where if you like the first song, there's a good chance you'll probably like the rest of the of the seven. It seems like an EP effort, not like a full length, but uh, we'll get your take on it here. So uh, we're talking with Daniel Vaughn, by the way. TMBBQ.com, his website. Keep an eye out for new barbecue stories and, of course, the tipping story and the tea story that's going to be coming out as well. And we'll catch him one more time before the end of the year. Daniel, always appreciate the time. And we'll see you in December. Thank you so much. You got it. Daniel Vaughn right there. Excellent. See? Every once in a while, I might be one up on the guy that's got his finger on the pulse of Texas barbecue. Although, technically speaking, it has nothing to do with barbecue. It is music. But music and barbecue go together. I could argue it either way. TMBBQ.com is his website. You can find him on the blower at BBQ Snob. We'll go ahead and wrap up this second hour and show right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Let's get back to a guy who has more experience giving you his opinion than he actually has cooking. Once again, here's your host. Greg Rampy. And once again, we thank Daniel Vaughn for joining us for a little bit of an extended segment as we're five minutes past the top of the hour. Once again, his information, tmbbq.com and at bbqsnob on social media. 
Also, one more time before we get going here tonight, if you like this really cool shirt, this color specifically in that setup, you're in luck because you can order one through the end of the month. All you have to do is send me an email, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com, and in the subject line, put shirt promo, and then I will uh, tell me what size you want. And remember, they start at $35. They go uh, small, extra large, small, two extra large, 35 bucks, and then $2 increment increases, 2XL, 3XL, 4XL, and 5XL. You can pay by Venmo, and you can pay by personal check. That check has to clear. All payments need to be in before the order is placed. If the order is placed and you have not paid in full, you're not going to get a shirt. I'm just getting it all out in the open right now as I have the last number of weeks. Good. Well, that's it. Uh, don't forget, join us this coming Saturday out in Hartville, Ohio, at Hartville Hardware for the 10th Annual Grill Fest. Mike Lang will be there, and Steve McMillan will be there, Dave Q will be there, Matt Frampton will be there, and unfortunately, Captain Ron will not be there, but we'll see who fills in for him. All the way back in the first hour, it was the aforementioned Steve McMillan, buyer over at Hartsville Hardware and the Grill Zone there. And then we followed that up with a visit from West Wright, cookoutnews.com. And in the second hour, we talked with Mike Lang from Another Pint, Please. He will also be at Hartsville, as I just mentioned. And then closing it out with Daniel Vaughn, editor at our barbecue editor at Texas Monthly, tmbbq.com, his website. Big show plan for you next week. Hopefully, we also have a winner of a grill fest. Second hour's huge embedded correspondent with new embedded correspondent Matt Osman sitting in for his first time as we generate a new class for Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame. So how do I always leave you? September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. And until next Tuesday, if I don't see you Saturday... But until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe, saying, Come on! Come on! Hi, this is Bobby Rempe from Cleveland, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central.